Okay. So we're back over here at the pianos. Um, I had to turn my light back on so you could see. Um, this is uh, real quick on a side tangent. This little Sam Ash uh, student keyboard guide. Great if you're teaching uh, kids how to play piano. Um, highly recommend it. It's only $1.95. Teaches them to read music, shows them the keys. It's really cool. Alright, so back on track. Alright, so we just set the great organ up on our piano, okay? Or on our computer. Now let's test it out. So as you can hear, um, hopefully it comes out in good quality. You can hear that, you know, as soon as I hit the key, it, it's going straight through. Okay. Um, the way I have these pianos set up, if I, let me turn down my piano sound here. Um, my full weighted 88 key keyboard should now also play the same sound. So. Freaking awesome just to be able to have two pianos. Um, and the great thing about both of these that, um, let me back up here so you can see them. Uh, the great thing about both of these pianos being hooked up the way they are is I can actually map one piano to play one sound, one piano to play the other. Um, if I want to play a classical piece, I can just real quick turn off um, my USB to MIDI adapter here and turn up my volume here and just start playing um, my piano sound so you know it's great because it gives me a lot of options because this program honestly doesn't come with that great of a piano sound uh, nothing like what this Technics has inside of it um, but the great thing about this little controller here is edit mode and now I can hit one of these buttons here um, one of these keys and it'll select a different MIDI channel for me to uh, map my own custom sounds to so if I'm ever playing um, a gig or if I'm ever playing with you know a band or whatever just messing around say I'm playing with a distorted guitar sound um, and I really need to, to change over to a string quartet or you know a full choir um, I can already have those pre-mapped into my keyboard um, from the, the computer um, and then just hit the edit mode, hit the key, and it'll switch me over to the um, proper MIDI channel and start allowing me to play the sounds. Because if you notice now, I can hit the keys and nothing's happening because there's nothing mapped to that channel. Um, if I go back to number one, uh, let me, sorry. You can hear that I'm back to the organ again. Um, same thing with the uh, piano down here, the Technics. Um, I don't do it as much because it's not as easy. Uh, to switch the, the MIDI channels um, as it is with the M Audio Key Studio. You know, just hit the edit button and, and off you go. Um, the great little thing is is that these knobs, uh, the modulation and the pitch bend wheel, actually control my Technics as well through the program. So I'm going to show you guys that here real quick. Um, so I'm going to hold down, since I got the organ going, I'm going to hold down my sustain pedal, which uh, you see down here. Also, M Audio uh, or M Gear, as they call it. It also controls my uh, little key studio up here, but I'll show you guys that in a second. But anyways, I'm gonna hold a uh, note down. All right, so you can hear that sustained note. Now I'm gonna put modulation on it. Uh, let me turn it up real quick. Okay, so let's try this again. I don't know. It's really hard to hear if you can hear the modulation. There's the pitch bend. Now, I'm not touching the keys up here. This is all down here. Now, uh, obviously the same up here. Okay. Um, and a cool thing is, is that I can use my uh, sustain pedal with this key studio as well. And it's only hooked up to my Technics. But everything runs through the program, which is really nice. So if I sit here and hold a chord, a uh, C chord... And I have my foot down on the pedal, it holds the note. Uh, hold down the pedal here, same effect. Um, and like I said, the modulation and pitch bend wheels work for both keyboards at the same time, which is really nice. Uh, the only thing that doesn't work is this volume control, but, you know, not a big deal. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to show you guys that. Um, <clears throat> 
But it's a great little program. And uh, what you can do is if you ever do decide... I wouldn't personally use this program for any gigs or any shows or anything like that because it just doesn't have enough options. Um, but it is it, it can be controlled uh, if you know what you're doing. Unfortunately, I don't really know how to mess around with LFO and envelopes and all that stuff. I never really got into it. I like the preset sounds. But, um, you know, there is a lot of customization with these sounds. You can make your own. You know, there's just an infinite possibilities, I guess, uh, You could, if you know what you're doing. Um, I like other software, personally, if I were going to be playing a gig or something. Um, just for the sound quality or better pianos, actually. <laughs> Um, but you know, this is a poor man's version, but I wanted to show you guys that, um, how to properly connect everything. Notice too, um, this Jack server, I'm not running it. All I'm doing is using it to connect. Um, uh, trying to get the audio server to run on these computers is just a pain in the ass because of all the settings and, uh, permissions that you have to jump through to just get it to work. Um, I'm not running a real time, uh, image on here, um. For the for the operating system, so um, it's just a normal one. But they do have real time ones available for some of the uh, higher up computers that can handle it. I mean, this thing literally is running 256 megabytes worth of RAM. It's got an 80 gig hard drive that I threw in there, and it's I think it says Windows 2000 Professional or Millennium Edition compatible, not even ready, just compatible. Um, so it's an old computer, but as you can tell, I mean, it, it works great for the pianos, no latency at all, um, and it allows you to play uh, any music uh, sounds that you want. Let me see, um, I might sample a few more sounds here for you guys, it's kind of hard to do one-handed. Uh, we'll do a full square sound, um, and I'll actually I'll show you the MIDI mapping here too, which is really nice. So I'm going to go over to number uh, channel Three, I believe I'm set to now. Um, so right here, I'm going to set to channel three, and I'm going to choose a vibraphone sound. So let me see here if that's what it was. Or channel two, vibraphone. All right, so that's channel two. Okay, so let me see. What do I have it set to? Now the only bad thing is is that um, with this program you can only have one channel going at a time. So you know that's the only part that sucks. Whatever. Um, actually, there is an easier way to do this. Let me do the panel window here. Okay, there we go. That's what I was looking for. All right, so we got vibraphone set to channel two. Uh, let me turn on the second uh, panel here and set it up to channel one. Uh, so we should be able to hear. So two different sounds at once. There we go. Okay, so this panel lets you to have up to 16 MIDI channels open at once. Um, the way I was doing it over here earlier, not the correct way. Uh, let me set that back to channel 1. Okay, and set channel 1 to a full square sound. Okay. So now if we go back to our panel window, um, you'll see... Let me turn this light off real quick. Okay. Make it a little easier for you guys. Now you'll see it says vibraphone here and full square here. And I can change the volume uh, settings. I can change uh, left or right for the uh, speakers. So I can have just out of the right speaker uh, a full square sound and out of the, the uh, left speaker a vibraphone sound. Um, you can layer them. So if I wanted this to be channel one as well, you know, I could do that uh, easily um, so that you could layer, say, an organ and a string sound together if you wanted that and then adjust the volumes. Um, so anyways, I have the vibraphone, and let me choose something different than vibraphone because that's going to be kind of hard to hear. Um, I'm going to choose the ocarina. Um, I don't know, wrong one. Hold on, full square. We want this one to be the ocarina. Okay, so now we got the ocarina and the full square sound, um, and I'm going to show you guys how you can play both of those together now that we have two MIDI channels open. So... You can kind of hear a little of that modulation on there, that uh, 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 part. Um, 
So, let you hear that a little bit. And now, uh, the way we have this set up, now that i got two MIDI channels open, when I play this bottom one, it should be a full square sound. So... And you can kind of hear the modulation on that as well. Um, let me turn that off so you don't have to, have to hear that. Hopefully you guys can hear that. Let me turn it up just a little more. So, um, 